Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. This is my thrift flip video where I take stuff that I found at a thrift store or sometimes that was just given to me and I turn it into something that's more my style, which is kind of farmhouse, antique, French country, I don't know. Whatever vibes I'm feeling, that's what I turn it into. Um, today is an exciting day. Finally, y'all, since March 12th, all of my kids have started school. It's so exciting. They were so ready. They, they like school. They're ready to get out and see their friends again. So let's pray that all, all the teachers can keep them safe and they just have a great school year. I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be good. The baby has started school for a few weeks and we haven't had any issues. It's been going great. All the schools are implementing all the safety measures that they need to to ensure they have a wonderful school year. So I know the teachers are excited and I know my kids are excited. I cannot wait for them to come home and hear all about their day. I wish I didn't have to work today because you know what I'd be doing? I'd be sitting in my house and watching it stay clean. <laughs> That's kind of always my tradition when school starts because like, you know, the whole summer, you know, when you're home with your kids all the time, the house just becomes a mess and that's just part of it and it's fine but i also love when my house is clean but i'm working today so let's go ahead and i'm gonna show y'all what i'm gonna be flipping this week so i'm gonna show y'all how i take this piece of wood that was just given to me for free people know i love wood so they just drop drop their junk off uh, most of my wood i do get for free and i'm gonna turn it into a cute little tray that people have been scooping up like crazy to put next to their sink or in their bathroom it's gonna be really cute and rustic looking. And then, okay, I'm gonna try my hand at my crockery stamps again. So I have this set of three cups. They look like they're ceramic. I'm not gonna paint them. I do just need to take a magic eraser to them, clean them up a little bit. And then we're gonna see, since I have my ink, if I can um, get those crockery stamps to work correctly. So I'm excited to try that. And then I have these pumpkins that I picked up months ago at garage sales and just been holding on to them. They already have like the perfect shape, kind of half the work is done with me, but I am not feeling this bright orange. So we're going to turn these pumpkins into like a more farmhouse style fall look. So that should be fun. I'm excited to see if I can do that. You know, something I haven't done before, but... If you watched these episodes before, that's like a running theme. I just try stuff I've never done before and we'll see how it goes. But you know, you always gotta be willing to try. It's okay to fail, but most of the time you learn something and the next time you do it, you'll be better at it. So y'all just don't be afraid to try. And then this is for somebody, it's already been bought. Um, so I just need to turn this really outdated bread box into something super cute for someone's kitchen so let's go ahead and get started a lot of what i'm gonna do to this wood is total personal preference i'm running it through my planer and what this does is kind of takes off the old first layer of wood and then the wood looks nice and new since i didn't like the reddish tint that the wood had so this brings it back down to natural and then at the end i'll go ahead and make it look old again then I went and I cut it to the length I wanted. I like to make my trays 11 inches and 20 inches. That's my most common sizes that I personally make unless a customer orders a different size. And then I'm going to turn my saw to a 45 degree angle and I'm gonna cut off the edges. And that way this will be much easier to make a rounded corner, which you will see in the next step. But this kind of like quickens up that process if you just cut a little corner in your wood. So I'm going to take this grinder with a sanding bit on it. And what it does is it kind of makes it look like the piece was hand carved. I love it. Um, I just find it makes it look so natural and I'm just going to run it on all the edges and make those corners look, look even more rounded. Like take away the sharpness and soften it up to a nice round look and it kind of looks like a hand carved piece. The goal is to make it look as old as possible. And then these I just cut off of a crib run. I always pick up 
old cribs that are broken apart for next to nothing and I use all the pieces. So I painted it white, I cut the little spindles down and I'm going to turn them into feet. I like to glue them down. Then you can kind of move them around and make sure they're in the right place and then I go back with my nail gun and tack them into place permanently. The final step is to use cutting board oil. This is a food safe sealer. I'm just using a piece of fabric and you just rub it on top, which it kept getting stuck in the wood, which normally doesn't happen. But anyway, um, I just love the way it makes the wood look. It seals it and brings out the grain, but it also keeps that like old vintage look that I'm going for and that combined with the rough edges of the grinder. I just absolutely love the way this tray looks and so does my customers. To prep this piece, I'm sanding it down. This was a painting and I don't want the brush strokes or anything coming through. So I'm just gonna sand it down. That way it's nice and clean and flat and ready for paint. I'm using my spray gun with white chalk paint in it to just spray it down very quickly. As I say on every video, I love my spray gun. It makes my job go so much faster. I did have some bleed through as you can see where the painting was. I'm just using my Rust-Oleum clear coat or you can use shellac. I'm just going to spray it down, let it dry and go back over it with another coat of chalk paint and it'll be ready to go. Okay, I sanded the piece down with my Ordo sander just to stress the edges and I didn't um, film all this but also a bird pooped on it. A bird flew in my shop and pooped on the bread box after it was all done I was so upset so I had to wash it off of course it didn't all come off I had to spray to spray rust-oleum clear coat on it and then spray it again it was a whole process but you can't tell that the bird pooped on it I cut out a piece of cypress and on my computer I printed out the word bread and I'm using my transfer paper to copy the image onto the wood I thought this would be a good idea since the bread box front was so plain. So I texted the customer and told her about my idea and she said, yes, go ahead, do what you want to do. And I'm so glad she did because as you'll see in the end, it really turned out good and added some extra character to it. I am using my painter's paint pen, this brand I get from Walmart. I like to trace the edges of the letters first and then go back and fill in each letter as I go. I just find this is the easiest way for me to do it. And you want to be careful not to touch it while the paint is still wet. This is how I do all my signs. It is a little bit of a process, but I like that I can customize each word, each phrase to the piece that I am working on. I'm going to attach the bread label to the breadboard using wood glue and a few finishing nails. I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral. It is my favorite gray color. Now I wasn't planning on painting these little pots, but 
the ink wasn't really sticking to the slick surface so I decided to go ahead and paint them with chalk paint and since I had to paint them I might as well make them look like cement so I'm going with that cement look that I'm loving and I'm hoping with the texture that I'm adding that the crockery stamps will stick to it much better now when you're um painting something something with a slick surface the first coat is not going to go on good you just want to go ahead and get that first coat on there and let it dry and then your second coat will be much better and i like using the chip brush and i'm just going all kind of different ways trying to add some texture to this piece next i'm using waverly white wax and i'm just going to put it on the piece i'm going to cover the whole piece and then i'm just going to take a dry cloth and wipe it off and what it's going to do is going to stay in the crevices and the high spots will rub off and it'll give it that textured cement look that i'm going for i've been doing this look a lot and i really ha like how it comes out and i think it's going to be the perfect base for the crockery stamp. So I have been playing with the crockery stamp a little bit and I figured out if you put it in the corner of the um, sticky thing that it works a little bit better so you can hold on to it better, if that makes any sense. So you wanna put it down and then push, you have to push. I haven't really found a difference between the ink and the chalk paint. I feel like it kind of works the same. The trick is just to be able to push it down and hold it still. And then I think it came out pretty good. I'm going to seal this with Rust-Oleum clear coat and it'll be good to go. I had a po another pot that I was working on with the same like cement technique and everything. And it was flat so i decided just to go ahead and try stamping it just to see i guess i wanted to prove to myself that maybe it was the surface not me that was having such a hard time and it was much much easier and i think from now on i'm gonna use the black chalk paint to stamp because i'm just used to using chalk paint and i just kind of rather how that looks than the ink but I'm glad I tried different techniques to figure out the one that I want. I still do love these stamps and I just feel like I need to keep, keep practicing at it and I'll get better at it. And it definitely was easier on a flat surface. I did not get to the pumpkins this week. I just did not have time. So there'll be a next week's video. And as always, please comment below what was your favorite project that I did this week. Thanks for watching and give this video a big.